um, assurance. We have members of the committee, members of the administrative staff, clerks of parliament, members of the staff of the Office of the Auditor General. Now, um, the committee, of course, is properly convened under the legislation governing the proceedings of this committee, um, the Public Accounts Committee Act, uh, Cap 10, right? I think that's what it is. I would need to point out to you that you will be given evidence on the oath, and it is anticipated that you will be as truthful and accurate um, with your submissions as possible. And uh, I'll also let you know there's a penalty for not so doing. All right, we thank you for accommodating us. Um, you can either affirm that which you will say to us, or you can take a formal oath. The option is yours. The option is yours. Would I take the oath or simple af affirmation? Same for affirmation. Okay. You can lose the mask for the time being if you prefer because you're not in any close proximity to anybody else. Well, go ahead. I do solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that the evidence I shall give before the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, thank you very much. You get off your seat. And just for the record as you sit, um, state your name and your current position with the transport board and how long you've been in service there. My name is Fabian Wharton, the CEO of the Transport Board, one year, seven days. How are you finding it? It is uh, interesting. Interesting. Yes. Challenging. Very. Satisfying. Yes. When you get, when you achieve something, you feel really good about, you know, having what, what made a change. What do you list in your major achievements in the year you've been there? I'm happy to see the buses, the electric buses arrive. Um, but you um, haven't invited us for a ride in one of Well, I'll make sure that happens. Well, you should. Yes. <laughs> All right, Mr. Warden. Um, the, the areas of query would have been indicated to you in the summons which you received. There were six or seven of them having to do much with the processes approved at the transport board, the procedures put in place for governing operations so that there are high levels of service afforded to the public by the board, high levels of accountability, and a clear pursuit of the mandate of government and providing the public service of transport for the people of Barbados and, and our visitors, etc. cetera. Uh, there's some other issues there relative to concerns raised by the Auditor General in his last special report of the transport board having to do with uh, replicated invoices, uh, um, uh, high frequency of repairs of same vehicles, even a listed missing vehicle, which I'm sure you have no knowledge of, and, and there's some wrong you will tell us. Uh, uh, so, but we are concerned that we can't find minutes of the meetings of the management of the transport board. Miss Willoughby, who serves under you would have presented for the information of the board uh, 17 copies of minutes referencing 17 meetings held. Well, there are several other meetings held as we understand that. And that the minutes of those meetings would have been recorded and would have been circulated across departments. But yet, she has not been able to provide us with any more. Can you speak to that matter? Well, all I can say to that matter is when we received the request, um, Ms. Willoughby actually sits in the CEO and COO's office. The COO would have been the former marketing manager, and Ms. Willoughby would have been her secretary then under the period. But when we searched the office of my office, we would expect these things to be held. The only things we found were old board minutes, but we did not find any management minutes. When we searched, when we queried with the secretary in finance, which would be Ms. Sue's uh, secretary, still couldn't find any physical copy of those minutes. So the minutes that you received would have been the, those minutes that Ms. Holder, who's the CEO, and 
Colleen Willoughby was her secretary then, would have had kept in their possessions filed in their department. So those are the only minutes that we can find on the Con County Transport Board that corresponds to the period that you are looking for. I actually physically helped Ms. Willoughby search for those minutes. Would you care to venture an explanation as to why that situation should update? I, I really don't know, to be honest. Um, Does it mystify you? It was kind of surprising. I expected to find them. It was, you, when we got the request, it was like, okay, that's, that's a small issue. But um, trying to locate them was another matter altogether. What happens to um, the records of meetings um, in which you sit? You sit as chair of the management meetings? That is correct. And what happens to the record in minutes of those meetings? Well, those meetings are kept with the current secretary, which is Ms. Willoughby, in her office. Meetings are held with what frequency? Once a week, every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. And you've been here for a year? That is correct. So you have copies of all of those minutes? That is correct. Okay. But in some instances, let me just cry for you, you may not have a meeting on Tuesday because you may yeah. miss some. Yeah. So uh -huh. you, will not, you will not fall evenly every single I'm Tuesday. Any other question from anybody else relative to the matter of missing minutes? Good afternoon. Nice to meet you again. Hey, good um, I know in most organizations, the minutes would have been kept on computer. Was that the case with you all? Well, they are, from what I saw, the minutes were a hard copy. I have not seen any soft copy any, any, the minutes Anywhere. any year. No, there's nothing. I know we keep some now on the shear, uh, which is the shear drive. I'm a computer person, so I talk mm -hmm. loosely. So on the shear drive, um, that is what we do now. But so that would have been new to you, as yes, far as you know. That is correct. Any other question? Three minutes from anybody? All right, we can move to the other uh, aspect we will want to uh, interview you on. You know, the current ser serving CEO, when you would have arrived at the transport board, um, what, what would you have discovered that bothered you, that troubled you, that you saw as challenge or problem that needed to be addressed? Um, what was your assessment of what procedures were in place for critical operations and um, the extent to which these procedures were being followed? Just give us a general assessment of uh, your findings when you arrive, and perhaps we can ask you after that what has been done since then to bring about some improvement. What I, what surprised me were, what was given to me first was the contents of the Auditor General's special report to look at, and I was extremely surprised by its contents in terms of the lack of processes, procedures, the issue of how double invoicing could occur. So I know that the board had, prior to my arrival, um, hired an internal auditor. And during the year that I have been there, we have done reviews on the quality We are currently doing the quality assurance, some areas of quality assurance right now. We have done stores. We have done purchasing. We have done, um, fix, we started to fix the asset register to make sure we know where the assets are, where they're located, et cetera. So it's a case where, in some instances, there were policies there, but they were dated, you had to review them. And in other cases, the policies weren't followed. Um, on the IT side, the system had some deficiencies, so we had to get upgrades done and, and patches done to fix some of those deficiencies as well. So that is basically what has been happening over the last year. And we have also, in terms of dealing with parts and how we are the parts, we are only taking the dealer recommended parts for the Marco Polo, so that is what we are doing as well. And then we make, we make sure too that we had the process for um, disposal of assets for disposing of the buses clearly documented as it relates to how do you determine when an asset, particularly a bus, um, is disposable. You compare the cost to repair versus, um, versus the cost the benefits you can get from that bus. So say for example, if it takes you $200,000 to repair a bus, and the bus is a 97 year, 97 model bus, then you start to recognize that that doesn't make any sense. So then you, you would strip the bus, take its parts, let those parts go into the stock inventory, 
and then go through the boarding process, which, which would also involve having the, an independent assessment done by the workshop manager of the Ministry of Transport, Works and Water Resources. And then he applies a value, and then that bus can then be disposed of. And we did disposals recently through a public auction. So those are the kind of areas that we have, have tightened on. What about relationships with um, um, agents who supply services, uh, contracts, and what are your contractual relationships with some of the major partners that the board has dealt with over time? UCAL, Transtech, these guys, these kind of guys. Our relationships for now are UCAL, GEO, Simpson Motors, and an N. Mostly. Who is GEO? This is a, a, another bus repair uh, workshop as well. Okay. So these are, those, those are, they are vetted and judicious is done to ensure that they can deliver it and etc. Uh, we make sure that we follow the processes that returns to when a bus comes back from the supplier etc. So the relationship is one which is where there's policies Establish the policies do not deviate from supplier to supplier. The process is a straight process for everyone. You have a relationship with Transtech? Did you mention Transtech just now? No, at this point in time, we don't really have a relationship with Transtech. Is there any specific reason for that? No, no there's none. Oh, okay. Anybody else? Yes, go ahead, Senator Nurse. Just one little um, question. In the Auditor General's report, he had identified um, a number of instances where um, the board, the transport board, had been billed, double billed, doubly billed for um, work that was done, and they had actually paid it. Um, he had identified up to the tune of just over a quarter million dollars um, um, that was affected in this, in this situation. This is obviously very concerning. And I'm just wondering, since, since um, you've been there, um, what has been done, or can you just enlighten us, on what have you done in, to strengthen um, this area? Because obviously there is, there is something going wrong that is, um, the oversight is obviously not as strong as it should be. So I'm just wondering what you would have put in place or what the board has put in place to rectify the situation. Well, I understand your question I, I, and the concern is, is a genuine one. What, what could have happened before was that, say for example, yourself um, dealt with a supplier and you took the invoice um, into accounts, for example, and someone signed off on it then the accountant would assume that everything is okay and then go ahead and pay. Um, but the correct procedure really and truly, especially for servicing, um, is that when the job is complete, that job has to be assessed with the Quality Assurance Department. So these are already checks and balances coming, which would not allow a double invoicing out to occur because it's not, it has to be channeled through the system. So this is what happens first. The quality assurance persons will have to check first that what was done to the bus is what was needed to be done to the bus and that the bus is actually fixed and working. The invoice, the cost of that repair is entered into the system by the quality assurance clerk. So whereas someone may want to walk and bring an invoice into finance, and then the accounts payable clerk may be into it so it can be paid. That can no longer obtain because quality assurance persons have to ensure one, the job is done, two, they are signed up for the job, and three, they are clear into it. Then that, when that happens, it goes over then into finance through the system or through the computerized system where they do their checks and balances. So therefore, there's only one invoice coming through the system. Then the approvals are done then the payment is made. The payment is not even made yet. Then the payment is recommended for a payment, and then it comes to myself, Ms. Soda, and the acting FC to ensure we verify that all everything has been in place. We double check with quality assurance. We do our checks and balances, and then agree to pay. So although it may, some people say it's a long-winded process, 
Um, we have to do it that way, given what transpired before, to try to make sure that we stop all of these holes and kind of minimize and alleviate all of these issues that can occur with double invoicing. So that is the process that we have in place right now. Thank you, Chair. Just one question. Um, you raised a point there that was of interest to me in terms of the systems and the checks and balances that you've put in place to ensure that you don't get double invoicing going through the system. Would you know, and you also demonstrate a high level of knowledge on the procedures under your um, authority, would you happen to know if that magneto system, are you all still using? Yes, that? we are. And would you happen to know if the magneto system allows for the same invoice to go in twice? Or is it as you were seem to be suggesting when you were speaking that one came through the system and the other one came by hand through to the financial controller? Right. Would you know if the magneto system had that weakness that uh, invoice could go through, the same invoice could go through twice? Or would it have to be the other thing that you shared just now was possible? From my knowledge, from what I have seen, um, I can't say definitively if magneto would allow the same invoice to go through twice. But I know that if it's coming through magneto, you will pick up if it's the same invoice coming through, for sure. For Basically, sure. check our balances are in place. Okay. Um, even if the invoice has a different number, it should be caught somewhere between quality assurance and the CEO and the COO because of the checks and balances that are in there coming through. So even if there was a slip, there's still enough built-in check and balances in the procedures to pick it up very quickly. Pick it up. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mr. Trotman, did you have any question for Mr. Mr. Chair, just ask a couple of questions. Um, when we were looking at the report, um, one of the great challenges that the board faced was um, having its deficit was a challenge. Um, has that situation changed? Any we're ha having some difficulty hearing it. Yeah, we were talking about um, some of the issues that what would have occurred over the period of, of the audit the review. Um, one was bus availability. Um, how has that situation changed? Let me start with that one. Well, as, as you will noted, but the government of Barbados had also purchased 33 new electric buses, so that significantly increases the amount of buses available. There was also a project taken on by the government, uh, by the board, which saw 15 additional units being retrofitted. There was the engines and the transmissions were changed. These gave us tremendous cost savings on brakes, um, diesel consumption, etc. We are doing another 15 of those. Actually, right now we are so in circulation. Right now we have about 17 of those retrofitted buses. So what we have done is also look at ways to reduce our costs especially given the COVID time uh, with the falling revenues. We have gotten more efficient with a lot of operational things that we did um, in terms of how we utilize our staffing, our security, et cetera. So the, the board was manage, had managed to, to reduce its losses, inclusive of the government subsidy, down to um, $8.3 uh, million in the last financial year. So it, it is a case where it's a work in progress. We have taken a lot of the recommendations that you had in the, in the report and used those with the internal auditors to create the new policies that guide everything else. And we have seen significant savings. In addition, what we have also done is place a huge emphasis on physical security, installation of cameras, et cetera, um, to ensure there's no revenue leakage in terms of you know, access to diesel or diesel pumps and those kind of things. And so what we are seeing is a, is a gradual decline in the in the, um, in the expenses, especially bus or the bus maintenance side too. What has happened is that, take for example, a normal bus, you change the linings probably every three weeks or so, but with the retrofit buses, you're seeing the improved performance and the, the length of time that you have to take to make those changes. So, so the, the cost to maintain the bus significantly decreases. 
So, so if I just want to look at, you know, a couple areas, so you say bus availability has increased. Mm -hmm. So what kind of fleet level do you have now? The fleet level now is about, let's say, 33, and uh, in a region of about today, about 60, 70. Um, but we still have, remember, it's, a, it's fluid. I don't need to see a number, but I just got to, it's got to be open as much so you can understand. So we may say 60 today, and it could be 90, say Wednesday, 100. So we're looking somewhere between a fleet of 60 to 100 buses and that are workable. And then we may have a major defect, sort of major defects of about another 20 buses that would like need a major injury repair or major transmission work, which would take longer. So in addition, the board's model now is not to try to get to 250 buses per se. Remember, the board has the transport augmentation program, which is used to subsidize the, the fleet size. So therefore, if you, got the, if you have the transport augmentation program, which is that, and just for clarity, for everyone present, that is a program which uses private minibuses and ZRs or those type vehicles under the transport board's operation and under its schedules. So what you would have, you have a fleet of what we call TAP vehicles. That number is now 71. So those vehicles plus the electric vehicles, plus the retrofit vehicles, plus the older vehicles that we have, the best of them, when you put that all in context, you start to get the fleet that you need in order to service the routes that you're looking to do. So it means that trying to keep, uh, as what they were trying to do before, they were trying to keep 180 old buses on the road, which the cost was astronomical. So now, you cut that in half, basically, you retrofit some of them, that you get the savings from doing that. You bought 33 electric buses and you have that. So therefore, you have a fleet that's gonna cost you less. So in terms of the ideal fleet, uh, or do you have a number in terms of what you would consider ideal? Probably about 160, 170. And what would that be based on? How would you arrive at 160? That is based on the routes currently, and uh, that we would we would service, as well as the other needs in terms of where we are having some issues with cross-country routing, et cetera. And, um, but we have done a thorough assessment of that, so that is why you get to that number. So and you mentioned in terms of finances that last year that they, you had a loss of $8.3 million, I say compared to what, so that you have a better idea the year before? I think it's 21, I don't want to um, give an incorrect number, especially okay. if I was sitting on the oath, but I will tell you the, re the reduction was around $11 million. $11 million. 11 point something. But I would pass that exact information on to the, the committee. Right. The revenues were declining over the years for the transport board. Um, how are this fearing compared to previous years now? But remember to, um, it, it is, it is a, a situation where you have a declining ridership in terms of overall in the market. The, the market is contracting a bit. Um, even when the, the bus fares went up to 350, where people were expecting this huge increase in revenue across the sector, that did not happen because some people opted to walk, some people opted to drive, some people thought it was more financially better for them than to go and get a loan and buy a car. So the, the actual market shrunk a little. And then with COVID now, the market and the, and the way how the economy is. So the revenues are under pressure. Um, and that is why we are spending so much time on the expense side, because we know the revenues is under severe pressure. What about competition from the private sector? How is that impacting on you? In terms of? Well, in, in some instances, you have transport board and private sector buses on the road. Um, transport board, I assume, would have a schedule. They don't have schedules. Mm -hmm. So how does that play out? It is a difficult situation to deal with, especially when it's the same and identical route. You are correct. Um, because it is no, there, is no, there is no secret that the, the private operator will wait. You know that the bus is going to come out at 11.30 or 12 o'clock, and they will come out at 20 past or 25 past and be five minutes ahead of the bus, and then they get all the passengers on the road. So then the board bus will only basically be moving with seniors or, and the persons who would have you know, boarded the bus in the terminal. So that, that is one of the challenges we have. Um, is it going to go away? No, it's not. Well, unless we do a total rationalization of the entire sector, but that is the reality of the situation which we are confronted with. So in terms of strategic planning, would you have listed all the challenges that you think that you would face 
and have a kind of program in place to deal with these challenges? Yes, we have done that already. So what would be some of the key challenges that you think that you face? And what are the, some of the suggestions that you want to put in place to deal with these challenges? Well, as it stands today, we, we have issues with, you know, we have some issues with the financing, et cetera. So we have, we have done a lot on that in terms of reorganizing the business and how the business function. We have also challenges, as you said, with, with, the, with the competition, with the private vehicles, et cetera. So we work with our partners to ensure, you know, that we get it right in terms of making sure that certain Certain times of the day where we know that the competition will disappear, we make sure that we have our buses here. So that's the strategic, the strategic move in terms of getting revenue from that route, which might be perceived as a route that is not a good one. So you, you don't, sometimes you don't try to fight, 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 but you maneuver around the scenario that you're confronted with, right? Um, in terms of the perception of the board and, and, and trying to get the public image of the board increased. We have done a lot of work with that. We have done, because we were basically very silent on social media. So we have now done a lot of work in terms of social media, in terms of messaging, using GIS, using the Instagram, the Facebook, et cetera. Those, that was one of the big areas as well in terms of strategically positioning the organization and getting the messages across. So those are some of the just the basic areas. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Trotman. Any queries over here? Any questions over here? Go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity again, Mr. Chairman. It came out of the response you gave me earlier, and I just wanted to clarify a process and get it on record. Based on what you said in terms of the magneto system and how a, uh, an invoice proceeds through the system all the way up to the financial controller, Going back to the issue that was raised in the Auditor General's report, where mm -hmm. you had one invoice being presented twice. In both cases, whether it flows through the Magneto or whether it comes by hand to the financial controller, does would every invoice have to start with the Quality Assurance Department? Or the or the department to which the service was, was, was rendered. Was rendered. So mm -hmm. if it's, let's say for example, it's an electrical repair to some bulbs or something in the organization, mm -hmm. that would not come to quality assurance, that will come through the um, administration department. So they would have to validate, do the validations, et cetera, before it even reaches the finance department. So someone, whoever starts that invoice would have had to verify that a repair had actually happened and that that repaired unit, whatever it was, was in working order before they could sign off and have it presented into your system. Agreed. Yes? That is correct. And also remember, it even starts before the invoice because before the invoice, you have to have a request for the service and then you have to have a quotation for that service and then the service has to be performed, and then you get the invoice. Just wanted to get it on record. That is fine. Thank you. Do you have, um, Mr. Wharton, any internal memos or any such documents relative to your attempts to improve operational management issues down there that you can share with the committee? Yes, we have all the. I can. I can. Have them forwarded to your office. Uh, is there a documented strategic plan following on from what uh, Mr. Trotman had asked? Can we share, see a copy of that as well? Yes. Uh, uh, anything else for Mr. Wharton from anybody? Thank you, sir. That's it? That's it. For now, anyhow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Have a good afternoon.
sent an SMS. Well, next week I go ask that, or week after next, I don't know. Uh, we have coming Miss, yeah, we have coming um, Miss Sandra Ford, who is the general manager at the Transport Board for the period under review. Um, she should be in a position to answer any or all of your queries, um, several of which you would have put to previous, to prior witnesses, and she may have a perspective on that. We have the six or seven broad areas that are indicated in the summons to every witness, but then of course, coming out of the testimony of the evidence given of several, you may have some other questions which you want to raise. I propose we don't go beyond 515 for today, if that is uh, fine with you. Kilbringer. Hi. All right, thank you um, for coming, Ms. Ford, and being patient enough to wait until this hour. We usually conclude these sessions around 5. Today we will go to 5.15 with um, your consent, of course. Uh, we will not go beyond that today so that we will have at least a half an hour to afford you the opportunity to share with the committee with respect to the matters indicated to you in the correspondence. Um, the committee is properly convened um, under the legislation and has the authority to take evidence from you in a public forum. So this is being um, carried via technology to ears and eyes on the outside. Um, we would have to make you aware of that. Also, I remind you of the fact that it is anticipated that the evidence you will give will be as accurate as possible as far as you, you know. And um, I didn't quite hear that last part. We will have to advise you that the evidence that you will give it is anticipated would be as accurate as oh. you can make it okay. so that we avoid the peril of any um, misunderstanding. Um, you have to take an oath that is required or you can affirm if you would. Sure. I can. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and give the guidance. Can I stand? Yes. I do solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that the evidence I shall give before the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And you just state for the record your name and your position with the Transport Board at the time, um, which is covered by the special report of the Auditor General, which is 2015 to 2018, beginning 2015, mid 2018. What was your position at Transport? Board General Manager. Then, and your name for the record. And Sandra Ford. And Mr. Pierce is with you as your counsel. Yes, he is. Uh, thank you very much. <coughs> you have a document with you that we sent you relative to the broad areas that the committee is concerned looking into? I received it. You have that with you? My attorney yeah. has it. All right. Okay. Well, members of the board, on my left, Minister Husbands and Senator Nurse, on my right, um, Dr. Brown and absent for the moment is Minister Walcott. We have also the staff from the Office of the Auditor General led by Mr. Trotman, the Auditor General himself. All right, comfortable? Yes, I am. Which is Ms. Who is Mr. Trotman? Okay. You have a special interest in knowing who is Mr. Trotman? I have spoken to him once. I don't know if you can. Ah, okay. Okay. All right, we will open to questions from members. Dr. Brown, Mr. Husband, Senator Nick, Senator Nurse. Anybody wants to go first? Mr. Trotman, anything you want to raise with Ms. Good 
thank you, Chair. Just a few questions, really. For and you need to raise the volume. Just a few questions for uh, Ms. Ford. Um, Ms. Ford, in terms of the special report, we did receive a response from the Transport Board. Uh, one area that was of interest had to do with the fact that um, the board had indicated that they had made substantial savings vis-a-vis -vis the whole issue of insurance. As a matter of fact, they indicated that they would have saved approximately $1 million um, from renegotiating the insurance fleet of the board. I'm not too sure if that happened under your watch or if it happened in the subsequent year. You aware of that? It didn't happen under my watch, no. Right. So could you tell us, because I'm kind of interested in terms of how such large savings could have been made. So basically, how did the board go about ensuring its fleet? Was it a tender process? Was it um, how? I don't quite. I said it did not happen under my watch. Well, I understand. Right. So I'm talking okay. about prior to, to that, how did the board go about um, having someone insure the fleet? Oh, it was tendered. It was tendered? Yes. Okay. So it was the same firm all the time? And we went through a customs broker. Okay. Customs broker, that um, company did the work for us. Okay. So it's through a tender process? Yes. Okay. And you, have, you would have set up a committee, and whatever the committee recommended would have been accepted by the board? Whatever the committee recommended, yes, would have been accepted by the board. Okay. Um, just a couple of questions. It has to do more so with the operations of the, 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 the um, transport board over time. Um, you had mentioned the, the, the fact that the transport board was not able to have a role in fleet of any substantial numbers. Um, I think in my report, you had indicated that the main reason was the lack of funds. Yes. Right. Um, and this was funds to buy parts? Yes. So tell me something, in terms of the, the large amount of money that you had to spend on these rel relatively old buses, was the thought ever, did the board ever make a recommendation that perhaps this model wasn't working, repairing these old buses? If the board ever thought that the model of just trying to repair old buses was had was wasn't going to work, I just want to clarify something with you. When you say the board, mm -hmm. we we usually refer to the board as the board of management, and then you have the board of directors. You have the board as a management team, okay. and then you have the board of directors. So, which board are you referring to? The management or the well, well the, the management directors? obviously would make suggest recommendations right, to the board. Okay. So, did the management make recommendations to the board? Well, look, these repairing these old buses just is not cutting it, and we need to have a different model altogether. Yes, we did. And what was the outcome? The outcome is that it was sent to the, our recommendations were sent through the board to the Ministry of um, Transport and Works, and we would have had to wait on them until we, for them to say whether or not we can purchase or couldn't purchase. And what, wait, so what was the outcome? No. The outcome was limbo. You said limbo. Neither no nor yes. Um. They had an issue, the whole issue of obtaining spare parts. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the chair, your former chair, who had just given evidence, had indicated that part of the problems um, that the board would have, would have faced was that it, was, it didn't have funds. So because it didn't have funds, it had to kind of rely on the local serv service provider, the mm -hmm. local provider. Yes, you because we. Go ahead. There was a particular um, service provider who had given us a line of credit, if you want to put it like that. Right. And that's the, that's the service provider who we can get parts from without having to, well, utilizing the line of credit. Okay, so that was one of the main reasons why you would have chosen that particular service provider? That service provider was the entity that was responsible for bringing in the majority of our buses as far as I'm aware. Oh, this is Simpson Mortis. <laughs> you could say it is Simpson Mortis, Simpson Mortis. That's correct. Right. Um, but we were talking more about the, like, the transmissions. Yeah, what and, about them? Right. The fact that you could buy parts a lot cheaper 
overseas than you could source them locally. As it relates to transmissions and purchasing parts locally or externally at a cheaper price, that's not my area, because I am not too sure about that. What I can do, the actual transmission, mm -hmm. we got at a, a, we call them recon transmissions. We got them at a cheaper price, which was US 2000, um, 250. Mm -hmm. And those were the transmissions that we were using after. Right. So the question was, why, why didn't you use them more? Why, why, why didn't you import more of the transmissions since they were could be had at such a low price? I, when I was there, I, we would have had about, I would say, between 30 to 40, because we ordered them in tranches of 10. And for me to ask, for you to ask me why we didn't order more, mm -hmm. we didn't have any money. So tell me something. The chairman had also indicated that from time to time he would use his own personal credit card to purchase things for the transport board. You would agree with that? From time to time, during the period is July, um, from 20, during 20 year 2016, that's when he would have used his credit card to purchase important parts uh, yeah, for the transport board. And the main reason why that was done? Firstly, the main entity, the service provider, they had ceased all credit to the transport board. Can I refer to a document, sir? Surely. Sure. December 31st, 2015, the transport board's main local service provider closed the transport board credit account, which had an outstanding balance in the eight-figure range. On January the 1st, 2016, the said main local service provider opened an account for the transport board to cover labor costs only with a seven-figure credit limit and specific credit arrangements. It was further stated that with immediate effect, all purchases for parts had to be cash on delivery. On February 25th, 2016, at a board meeting held on February the 25th, the board approved the special project at Mangrove and the project commenced in March 2016 with little or no tools in the Quality Assurance Department. On July the 15th, 2016, the general manager prepared a board paper entitled Acquisition of Tools and Equipment by the Chairman for the Special Project at Mangrove. I have a copy of it. And it was presented to the board meeting of July the 26th, 2016. The board paper was rejected by the board of directors who stated no board paper should be done and because the chairman has spent his money and he must be repaid. On September the 5th, 2016, a presentation on access to bus parts and bus availability was done by the general manager, the financial controller, and the then fleet management consultant to the then prime minister and the then minister of finance at government headquarters. I also have a copy of that presentation. And on September the 13th, 2016, the financial controller prepared a request for funds of approximately a million dollars from the Ministry of Finance to assist with the purchase of parts. And on the 21st of September 2016, approval of approximately 982,000 to assist with the purchase of parts, et cetera, was received via a memo from the Ministry of Finance reference 5058-00B. Dot volume T12, volume three, dated September 21st, 2016. So I gave you that outline up to September, July, the, what's that, yeah, July 2016, to indicate to you that the board had no funds and that is what would have encouraged, I don't know if that's the correct word, the chairman at that time to use his credit card because he, we needed the parts urgently to assist with the rollout of the buses. Well, tell me something. If the chairman would have been using his own personal credit card to 
purchase equipment and so on. So how long would it take for you to reimburse the chairman? Was it promptly or? No, not promptly. Not promptly. Those, the parts had to be in, landed in Barbados, sent to our, or taken to our parts department, and the parts would then be checked off by the supervisor of our parts department. He in turn would enter them into the system, and after that process has been completed, and he was satisfied that the parts that were ordered are the parts that came, and it total X amount, but then after a while, the chairman would then bring in his, his um, receipts. I must say he was a little somewhat, should I say, lazy <laughs> in bringing in. He t it took him a long time to bring in the receipts. He brought in the receipts. They came to me. I, in turn, would have reconciled the he usually brought the receipts in with his own um, recommend, his own listing, his own listing. I would take the actual receipts and invoices, check it back against his listing, satisfy myself that what he said was there is what happened, and pass it on to the, as long as I was satisfied, pass it on to the financial controller with a memo indicating the amount, also indicating that, also attaching all the invoices and the um, receipts, as I said before, and indicating her that she can check, review, and process the, the payment as long as she was satisfied. I didn't say this in the memo, but as long as she was satisfied that everything was in order. She also got, she got copies of the respective invoices and uh, receipts, and I also sent a copy of that same pile to the accountant. So there were always, there would always be per, two persons in the said department that would know exactly what was going on. So tell me something, who, whose idea it was to use the chairman's credit card to assist the transport board? Would have to be chairman, it's his credit card. Right, but I mean, how did it start and how did it commence? I really, he, the chairman, felt, being the type of individual that he is, he felt that he needed to get all this, all the, the, the parts, as the required parts by the fleet attendant, fleet manager, by Mr. Bartholomew. He thought within himself that he should have these parts in as soon as possible in an effort to get the buses on the road. So the, the, the parts that the chairman purchased were strategic in nature in the sense that the transport board needed millions of dollars in parts. Obviously he's not providing millions of dollars. So how was it determined what parts or what equipment would be purchased? Mr. Bartholomew told him exactly what he needed oh, so to it was purchase. A, it was a discussion Complete management consultant, yeah. And, and you think. So in terms of the parts, in terms of the costs were known. There's parts and tools. Right, parts and, and tools. And the $982,000 didn't go to just buy parts and tools. We also paid um, creditors. Right. But in terms of these parts, for instance, were the costs known prior to the chairman, say, traveling overseas? Not as far as I know. He would have had to go online, check the, 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 the respective cost of any particular part, and then when he got to wherever he was purchasing from, then he would get the, the actual price. So did he have a, a limit? In other words, was there a limit in terms of how much the chairman could spend at any one point in time? He was using his, his credit card. So his credit card was the limit? I would assume so, but you should, you will have to ask him that question. Right, okay. All right, no problem. Mr. Chair, thanks. Anybody else? Yes, Dr. Brown. Good afternoon, Ms. Ford. I just, <clears throat> I'm looking at one of the invoices dated the 13th of July, 2016, for the sum of $36,431.72, <clears throat> which would have been sent in by Mr. Wiltshire. 
Um, I know there were parts that were apparently urgently needed by the transport board, but I am seeing from Amazon, uh, two Amazon orders really, one being a mowing counter set utility faucet for the top sum of $280.33, and the other being a musty laundry utility tub. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what's the date of that memo that the you're day, referring to? The date I'm seeing on the invoice is the 13th of July, 2016. And you signed it as well on that date. That's your phone. Is it? Can I have a look at it, please? Sure. I didn't get your name. What is it again? Sonia Brown. Oh. Um, I, I, I don't understand what you're, which one you're Go to the bottom of that page, mm -hmm. near to the Amazon. bottom, a faucet oh. and a long okay. and a top. She has it's right here. I need to find it. Ms. Brown. Yes, ma'am. The entry to which, is this all you got? Is this all Maybe there's totally in evidence? Totally everything? Is this all there's in evidence? Is this it? This is what you got? Period? Yes. All together, all the invoices? Yes. No. You got all the other invoices? Because I, I can help you, I have it right, everything is right here. That and this is wonderful. included in the memo that was in the, in the, so um, could we get copies, please? This was included in the board paper that was sent to the board for their approval. And this is the first set of funds that he would have sent, would have spent. Okay. So everything is in this and is probably, the sink that you're referring to was a sink mm -hmm. to be used in the test bench room. The faucet. Mm -hmm. It's a sink though. The sink and using the test bench room for clean, washing all the pieces of the, equipment from the test bench. I am not a mechanical person, but that is what it is. Okay. And it was set up in a special room. In fact, it should still be there in the transport board. All right. <clears throat> and, and as I say, you can have copies of all this. Okay. Everything is here. Not just these two or three pieces okay. of invoices. So we were so cast strapped that he needed to buy a faucet or a sink? I think you're missing the point. You I needed the sink in the test bench, in the I'm test bench room, and it's a special room. You're right, but we injector. were saying he had to use his credit card because the funds were not available immediately, yeah? I have that wrong. Right, but it wasn't bought as a single item. He bought it with other stuff. Okay. Um, there's something else here. And I am seeing an invoice. I, I, can't, I can't quite tell if Mr. Wilshire's name is on it, though. Which one? From Price Mart here. That only has, well, ink and Xerox copy paper. Something else I can't see. Is that it, was also necessary. It was is it connected to the same? I don't you tell Is it connected me. to the same thing? You might be able to tell yeah. me better. 
for mangrove? Was it necessary? I think it's a printer for mangrove. I just wanted to see the necessity for the chairman to have to purchase, this, to go into Price Smart to purchase these things. This um, printer to which you are referring mm -hmm. was sent to the um, a mangrove where the special project was held, and that was for the fleet management consultant mm -hmm. and his team to use because they had to enter all the data into the system and then print print various reports for I, the board. I understand the purpose of ink and printer. Thanks, though. But no, I'm no, just it was trying explaining to explain the purpose of the printer, the ink and printer. It was explaining to you where they went and why you had to go there. Well, all I'm trying to say, we are trying to say that we were so called Castra and line of credits were not open to us, so the, the chairman had to go purchase these things. I'm trying to figure out why this was necessary for the chairman himself to put this on a credit card. But that was his and choice. I don't, know, I don't know, but it's just unusual. This is what well, I'm trying to understand. That was it's his, his choice, choice, but. That was his choice, and if you find it unusual, well. I think everybody I, in this I room does. Do agree. Okay, um, I just find it strange, so I just wanted to know how come he has to be the one to do it. I know sometimes small items in terms of cost, the office, the, the, would deal with it and pay for it then. Oh, it was, the, okay, so it was, we were setting up the special project in March in order to get the buses out, particularly for April and September schooling. Mm -hmm. And as you quite rightly said, you know that it's, that's something that the office would would purchase, yeah, but office. eventually it went back to the office because he was reimbursed. Okay. To the office expense because he was reimbursed. Okay, thank you for now. You're welcome. Are you through, Minister Husband? Um, there are quite a few things, Chair, I would like to speak to, but not today. Yeah, well, but I just want to clarify. Yeah, well, ten minutes or so. You, I, I won't need the ten minutes. I just want to clarify something mm. that the um, Alder General had raised. Um, when the good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, when the Alder General was questioning the issue of the credit card and mm -hmm. the reimbursement. He had asked what period of time, how long did it take between the chairman spending his money and getting reimbursement. And you had identified that you go through a process of verification first, mm -hmm. but then it depended on when the chairman actually presented his invoice. And you said that um, he tended to lag in making that presentation. So could mm -hmm. you uh, give us an estimate? of how long it took when he spent his money and how long it took before he could receive reimbursement. Okay, if you take a look at the, um, let's, let's pull any invoice. Say the, the invoice from Amazon that is dated the 16th of May 2016. And he was reimbursed. July the 13th, 2016. So you can use that as a, as uh, a benchmark. Like July the? Um, 13th, 2016. And just to um, be clear, when you were speaking with the Auditor General, he was asking on what basis did you determine what items were to be bought? And you said it had to do with the special project. And then he was asking if there was a process by which you determined and agreed what item would be purchased and for how much. In other words, normally if you bought stuff, you would um, research, get some prices, and then a group would make a determination. But I just want to be clear that you're saying that that was not done, that the chairman went himself, went online, identified whatever the item was, and then did the purchase. He did it, he would have done the, the parts that related directly to the actual repair, bus repairs. He would have done that 
um, costing or with, in conjunction with the fleet management consultant. Um, even, let's say, he went on in lane and he purchased Whatever he purchased on lane, I can tell you the cost of it will be triple or double in Barbados. So it was a savings. Now, the, I think the question we wanted to identify is the process outlined by the board regulations, if that was followed even when the chairman was using his own money. In other words, my understanding is that he went online and looked for the part. There was no process by which a team who would normally approve a purchase did the search, identified what they wanted, and then said to the chairman, this one at this price, and it got approved. He would by also the board. work in conjunction with the parts supervisor who's familiar with bus parts. So the fleet consultant and who else? The part supervisor. Okay, I just wanted to get clarification on that, be sure I understood what okay. you said to Mr. Trotman. Thank you. Uh, are you finished? Chair, can I add, refer to Mr. Surely. Trotman? I should also let you know that in December 2016, a credit card was approved, a corporate credit card was approved for the Transport Board of $10,000, and that $10,000 was carved out of the existing operating facility. So it wasn't an additional credit coming from government to um, the Transport Board. And that there were four persons who were entitled to use a credit card, and they each had a limit of 2,500 Barbados dollars. But that would have been after, long after the project has started and the fact that we needed to get tools urgently for the project. All right, I thank you, Ms. Ford and Mr. Pierce. We come to 515. As we indicated, we would not go beyond that this afternoon. I can continue if you want me to, and I don't have Yeah, but our normal quitting hour is 5 o'clock on the other commitments. Um, but we welcome you coming back. You're not traveling anywhere soon, are you? I'm right here in Barbados. All right. Very I much so. I understand we're unable to meet next Monday or the Monday following, so we'll have to reset that new day, and we will, we will let you know. But we appreciate you coming today and sharing with the committee. You're and most welcome, sir. Unless there's something else most pressing to this committee, we will consider that we are adjourned until that moment. Thank you. Thank you, too.